on Nightline. Holiday heists tomorrow kicks off the holiday shopping season. But it turns out tis this season not just for giving, but also for taking. As stores gird for billions and billions of dollars in thefts, we show you how they do it and how you pay for it. From the global resources of ABC News, with Terry Moran, Cynthia McFadden, and Bill Weir in New York City, this is Nightline, November 23rd, 2011. Good evening, I'm Terry Moran. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving, a day to feast, but it's also the start of the multi-billion dollar holiday shopping season. Black Friday's now changed into Black Thursday, and it also marks the beginning of a lesser known, more sinister holiday tradition. Turns out that with a huge flood of shoppers who come to buy, comes a huge flood of shoppers with other plans, and it may end up costing you. Here's ABC's John Donvan. It's that warm and fuzzy time of year again, that open up your wallet time of year again, from now until Christmas, on the front lines of the American consumer marketplace. But it is also time, did you know, for a lot more of this, the theft that goes on spring, summer, and fall at a cost to the retail industry of $35 billion last year. And did you know it really starts to spike now in the holiday season? And in the supermarket industry, where the stores really only make a few cents on any one item, and at places like the Big Y in Wilbraham, Massachusetts, they put pictures like this on the wall. These are some of the more notorious folks that we've caught stealing. Some of them are, this guy's a flim flam artist. The loss to thieves nationally for supermarkets comes to almost six billion a year, and that cost has to be made up somehow. You know, if we aren't profitable, we have to charge more for what we're selling. But get ready for a more surprising number. Of all of the theft that occurs in supermarkets, nearly 40% of it is done by insiders, employees. And it takes place in one place, the checkout. Watch how this works, an overhead view of the cashier. Items traveling past the barcode scanner. See that red target? That is a turkey. And what's happening right now is that the cashier is subtly jumping it around the scanner so it's not actually being rung up as a charge, although it is mixed in with other items that are. Now with the turkeys, some places really see a spike. As many as four times more turkeys heisted in November and December than in the rest of the year combined. I thought maybe I'd give it a try. What are, we, what are you betting I'm going to get away with it? Nothing. <laughs> really? All right, let's see what happens. And so then I was on camera, taking the role of cashier to see if I could beat the system. And here's what I did. I legitimately scanned most of the random stuff I picked up, but I jumped the stuffing over the scanner and the napkins and, of course, the turkey. But who was actually watching this video and analyzing it? Who was responsible for detecting a turkey theft? Here you see he's bagging a bunch of stuff and the and target... The, and the customer is his grandmother? Exactly. Okay. This is Malay Kundu, the cheating cashier's worst enemy. He's skipping Skip a Skip that one. That red target means he's skipping them. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. He founded Stoplift, the company that invented the software now in use of hundreds of stores, and it's what's putting those targets on the turkeys and the other items that their analysis shows was skipped over or around the scanner in a process known as sweethearting. Well, why is it called sweethearting? Because if I'm the cashier, you're my friend, family member, fellow employee, I meet, I eat my sweetheart, I can give you things for free, um, you know, just by not scanning them. Any typical profile of the of the dishonest sweetheart or cashier? There's the one that, um, starting from the very first week that they start on the job, they're already sweethearting. Mm -hmm. And in part, that's why they took the job. And then there's also that great employee who's been with us for 10 years, she always shows up on time, and you come to discover that part of the reason for that is because she's been skimming off the top for years. Of course, in a world where we are being watched more and more, there are cameras everywhere, this just means we're being watched even more now as ingenious as this is, contributing to the big brotherization of our culture? Um, well, you know, the cameras have been there. Yeah. So we're not adding cameras. I think what we're doing is helping with employment and uh, keeping businesses afloat. 
And the cameras aren't just catching turkeys. It's, oh, so many things caught with the help of these cameras and his software, which is seeing an 80% increase in thefts around the holidays, billions in stolen and sweethearted goods. There's the turkey, it's coming up. Stuffing ingredients. Yeah. So you get a readout on what she just bought, pistachios. Exactly. Got scanned. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Carrots got scanned, but this target says she's stealing the turkey. Yeah. And there she goes. She may have she may have seen, okay, the barcode's on this part of it. I'm going to cover it up, or I'm going to just face the barcode the other way. So for um, somebody, she was saying Happy Thanksgiving. Basically. When you see that turkey being stolen, they have to sell 50 more turkeys to make up for the one that was given away for free. I asked Maureen about what happens to the people who get caught. And while she was reluctant to discuss the actual incidents of insider theft in her establishment, she said everybody is told when they start here, that yes, they are on camera. When we hire folks, we tell them we have cameras in the stores. But what happened when they watched me, I wondered. The system analyzed my moves from up above, and would I get those three red targets? Well, let's see. One, two, three, busted. Happy Thanksgiving. Not, I think, if I'd really thought I could get away with this. I'm John Donvan for Nightline in Massachusetts. John Donvan rounding up the turkey thieves there. Thanks for that.